During World War II, the U.S. Army faced an ongoing nursing shortage. Yet the Army was still racially segregated and resisted enlisting black medical professionals. Though thousands applied, less than 600 black nurses were allowed in by the end of the war. Many were given assignments considered less desirable and faced racism from fellow white officers. But for one African-American nurse assigned to a German prisoner of war camp in Jim Crow era Arizona, that experience was just the beginning of the discrimination she would face. It's all detailed in the new book, Enemies in Love, by author and journalist Alexis Clark. News Hour Weekend's Yvette Feliciano has more. German soldier Frederick Albert was captured in Italy in 1944 and taken to a prisoner of war camp in Arizona, where he met African-American nurse Eleanor Powell. How did they meet and what's the story of their courtship? Frederick, who was a great cook and a baker, worked in the mess hall and apparently he saw Eleanor for the first time and he shared this with surviving family members, that he walked right up to her and said, you should know my name. I'm the man who's going to marry you. <laughs> and it was all smooth sailing from well, there? Well, she was shocked, of course. I mean, here's this German prisoner of war, you know, hitting on her broad daylight. So it was obvious that he was, you know, trying to court her. Is there anything about their respective upbringings that you feel made them more open to an interracial romance? She was from a prominent uh, black family in the Boston suburbs. It was actually very progressive. It was called Milton, Massachusetts. She went to white schools, had white friends, and she was from an educated family. So although she knew about discrimination, she was largely secluded from that. Now, on the other hand, Frederick was from Nazi Germany, and he was from a very wealthy family, a prominent family, and they were German nationalists. Now, although they didn't join the Nazi party, they were um, believers in Hitler and the German Empire. But Frederick was an artist and was incredibly into jazz, and so that had been outlawed in Germany by Hitler. But he snuck around and would listen to it. So he had this impression of African Americans. They were artistic, they were warm. All the things that he never felt growing up in his family because he had a very dysfunctional relationship with his father in particular because he wasn't a military guy. He wasn't into the war. He really was this artistic free spirit. So he saw Eleanor and attached all these feelings and ideas and fell madly in love with her. So they started to see each other in secret. He volunteered at the hospital and they were able to go on these secret rendezvous and, and started a full-blown romance. When you think about two people who would have never should have been falling in love with each other, they found each other. And that's what makes this story to me even all the more unbelievable. I mean, he was a soldier. She was, although discriminated against, she still was an American officer in the army. So they were committing a crime, really. If caught dating an enemy POW, Eleanor could have been court-martialed and imprisoned. But that wasn't the only crime. Frederick was white and Eleanor was black, and they wanted to marry. In Arizona in 1944, that too was against the law. How were they able to get married? After the war ended, all of the German POWs were deported. And so Eleanor and Frederick, I mean, you call it youthful rebellion, I don't know, insanity. They knew that they, the best way that they could reunite is if they conceived a child. So they did. So he is deported. She returns home pregnant with the German POW's baby. And their plan worked because he was allowed to get sponsorship and he returned um, in 1947 and they married in New York. Interracial marriage was permitted in New York State, but that didn't mean their lives were going to be easy. They started moving around, having a lot of difficulty getting even leases because no one wanted to live next to them. Um, he couldn't really get a job. So they made the decision that they should move to Germany because he was groomed to take over his father's company. It was terrible. Um, Eleanor was treated badly. His mother was not excited about having a black daughter-in-law and made that very clear. They left Germany after a year and a half and then they moved back to the United States. They first settled in um, some suburbs outside of Philadelphia. They couldn't enroll their son in the school that they wanted to. They were told to go to a black school. So here they were, dealing with racism 
on both sides of the Atlantic, right? And they end up settling in Connecticut where he gets a job with Pepperidge Farm. And there's this community called Village Creek, which is in South Norwalk. It's actually, in their covenants, it's advertised as a prejudice-free zone. So they settled there because it was a community that welcomed mixed-race couples. Frederick and Eleanor had two sons and spent the rest of their lives in that Village Creek community. He passed away in 2001 and she in 2005. So what do you think we can learn from this slice of American history that you've documented and why is this story important today? They didn't let racism win. And I think you can always learn from that and particularly now and I think when we're in such um, partisan um, times, we already know that there's an increase in hate groups. I think racism is um, a lot more overt in your face now. I like stories like these when you show that that's not going to win. And I think we need to be reminded of these stories of perseverance, of courage, of hardship. Um, but at the end, there's a happy ending.